Oh, I guess so. Does that bring closer? Mm, that's, that should be good, yeah. Hey, Shalom Akim. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, and Kakwadash. We want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect. And uh, we just want to do a, a lesson based upon a Bafo declaration uh, going into it. And of course, debunking it with scriptures. So with that, let's get into it. This uh, Bafo declaration in Wikipedia, the Bafo declaration was a public statement issued by the British government in 1917 during the First World War. Announcing support for the establishment of a national home of the Jewish people. Right, because around this time, um, you know, when Esau, which is the Khazars, all right, which uh, came back as the, also the, uh, the Ottoman Empire, same people, all right, they were basically trying to establish uh, their strength within the Middle East. They were trying to get everybody to be on their side. Um, but you had certain nations that wasn't with it, one being Germany. That's why they went into war with Germany. Kind. Um, the declaration was contained in a letter dated 2nd of, of November 1917 from the United States Kingdom's Foreign Secretary Arthur Bal uh, Balfour to Ro Lord Rothschild. And if you know anything, Roth means red and child, red child. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what's Esau's biblical? Um, um, he, uh, Shashua wasted away is he, but um, Adawam or Esau uh, means red, right? Okay, um, Edom. A letter of the British Jewish community for transmission to the Zionist Federation of Great Britain in Ireland. The text of the declaration was published in the press on November 9th, 1917. So this is already preconceived in Esau's mind or what they were going to do it, how they were going to get into um, Israel. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and this is what the, um, the Baffle Declaration states here. Dear Lord Rothschild, okay, written November 2nd, 1917 from Foreign Office. Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you on behalf of His Majesty's government the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations which has been submitted to and approved by the cabinet, meaning the British uh, cabinet. His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in P Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. Right, because if you know anything, they were living in um, during the time of the Dark Ages. We ran these devils into the Caucasus Mountains, right? They were ran, we ran them into the Caucasus Mountains, and they were there for a thousand year period. But gradually, the Lord raised these devils back up during the Renaissance period, which Renaissance means rebirth. Okay, so um, let me read this again. Now. Um, His Majesty's government view with would favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people, right? Because they were called nomads, a wanderer, a vagabond. That's what the word nomad, they call the uh, the Khazars, the nomadic tribes. And the word Khazar actually means Caesars too, the czars. Uh, like you got like the czars in Russia. They still call themselves till this day. That's because they're Esau Edom, whether they're Russians or whether they're people living in Israel. Right. All right. Um, and will used their, and they were vagabonds, they were pushed into the mountains, like it says in Job 30, okay, in Revelation scriptures um, that pertain to Esau, Edom, and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object. How did they do that? By creating wars, okay, with Germany, by getting the United States of America involved in World War I to, to pretty much fight or uh, use them as, um, how you say that, what's that word, um, to throw off to throw off what, what, what the plan and the main objective was. And it was to get into Israel, into Palestine. So they um, used America to come into to the war in order to pretty much go against Germany and use other countries to go against Germany, all right, and make this fake facade that, uh, or uh, come up with this fake lie that uh, Germany was involved in murder, so-called taking the lives of, of, of six million Jews, which we gonna get into that. All right, so they, they're crafty. These devils are very crafty the way they remove ancient landmarks, all right, of, of how they use other people to get into it just to take their lands too. But Yeah, I got some. Uh, got fast I got that Joel 3 first, actually. Come This is Joel. Actually, I'll start at uh, Obadiah, actually. 
Obadiah, which is only one chapter, so verse 1, it says, The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord power, concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. All right, and that ambassador was, uh, how you say his name again? Uh, Amar, uh, Amar Abdul, Abdul Nasir. Nasir. Amar mm -hmm. Abdul Nasir um, said that the Jews left black and they came back white. Now, a lot of people try to argue the fact that this man actually said those words, all right, that they left black and they came back white because everybody on, on earth, even uh, the elites, they know who were li was living in Israel way before we were moved out of that land, all right? You got imposters in our land now. Right, you got these uh, 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 fake Jews or these imposters in our land that pretty much parted our land. We're going to get that in, in Joel. We definitely got to read that. Come on, come on. But you have these uh, um, um, Abdul, Nasir, um, Abdul Nasir, right? He said that they left black and they came back white. Because if you read in the scriptures, in the Bible, which these fake Jews don't use, it says that the Jews, the so-called uh, uh, Salak, that the Jews are dark-skinned. All right, they are black unto the ground. And that word for, for black means Kadar. They're dark-skinned. All right, so right, and even even Esau tells you in um certain books, which uh I'm thinking about the book from Babylon to Timbuktu. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, it was, I got it on me. It was okay. Jake that wrote the book, but when you uh, go into the preface, he goes into how he actually uh, got help from uh, Edomites. Right. You know, uh, basically to uh basically to get sources of information, and one of the a piece of information actually you grab that in page twenty. Come, on, I got you. This uh, from Babylon to Timbuktu, page 20. You know, talking about, talking about how uh, basically uh, white was like a social construct. That's on page 21. 21, yeah. Con. Um, let's see where I can begin over here. Let me just start over here, the second paragraph, uh, page 21. During the Middle Ages, the black nations of Africa and Asia had the greatest political, economical, educational, and military influence in the world. At this time, Meaning during the Dark Ages, at this time, Europe existed in a state of darkness for a thousand years. That's because the Moors, yeah. which more goes back to Moreno, why you got so-called Puerto Ricans, they use that term, or the uh, Latin, or, or Salaco, or the Northern tribes, they use that term Moreno. It hey, what's up, Moreno? Okay? But we pushed these devils into the mountains for a thousand years. Okay? In the, seventh, in the 17th century and later, this is when Esau was already in power. In the 17th century and later, Europe began to emerge out of the slaw of ignorance because the Lord brought them up gradually, brought them up, okay, mm -hmm. to be a superpower, which they are now on this earth. And certain Germans and others conceived of themselves as belonging to a superior race. Jo Johann F. Blum Blumenbach, a German, 1752 to 1840, was the first to divide humanity on the basis of skin color. Because, matter of fact, let me just jump back here to page 20. The ancient people did not classify races to skin color, all right, as this German Edomite did, right? The modern nations of Europe and America, the ancients, including the Greeks and Romans, identified people according to their national or tribal names. So back then in the ancient Roman Empire, they knew we were Israelites. The Esau had right. a rule over us. They said, okay, this is a Judite. Uh, he's mm -hmm. from this tribe. Okay, he's from that tribe. Exactly. They knew that, all right? But now in modern history, when he's just like they whitewashed the pictures of the dark-skinned images and um, the icons, uh, which are uh, iconoclasts, are the ones that um, create iconoclasm. Iconoclasts are the ones that whitewash images or they break off the nose of so-called black men to put their images. That's what they did during right. the Renaissance period. So during this, just like the Baffler Declaration, they sent the letter to the war cabinet, uh, um, yeah, to, to, to the British War Cabinet to um, find a specific uh, location for them to live because they were in the Caucasus Mountains, but they were gradually being brought up, even in the Ottoman Empire, all right? They were gradually, or Istanbul, or modern-day Turkey, or Asia Minor, they were gradually being brought up and slowly and slowly, all right? So what do you think they did? They whitewashed images. They came up with terms white, black, 1681 in Virginia, Elder Malcolm from the Chicago branch, okay, uh, brought, brings out that um, the the term white came in 1681 in Virginia. And Esau admits that in his books and in, in Google information. He tells you that. Right. All right, 1681. But the Lord brought, really, they came back into power around the 13, 1400s. Gradually, the Lord brought them up. Uh, okay, so I'm going to just read this here. And I'll get to your point, Oxalaka. It's, it's coming, it's getting into it. Um. 
was the first to divide humanity on the basis of skin color. This jo Johan, Johan F. Blumenbeck, okay, which is an Edomite. Up to this time, no such attempts had been made. You see, because going back into um, the priest that I brought out, all right, he, like um, it was a guy, Gamar Abdul Nasser, all right, he was an eyewitness, all right. Everybody back then was dark skinned, all right. We're telling you this, all right, but Esau likes to put it on paper all right, as if, you know, as if his paper contradicts history. You know, it's not void. He, that's why he wrote it. It's not void. Yeah, it changes history, right? Exactly. Can, uh, information is written down cannot mm -hmm. be void if the whole world already knows Esau's bullshit. Right. All right. It's not void. And also, too, Elder Malcolm posted up a video about this um Persian. He knows he's an ancient Persian from Iran that says that the the ancient Iranians or uh, Persians were dark skinned people. It said that how can these uh. Jews be the God's chosen people And he's going into it Brothers can watch that video I forgot what the title of the video was But it makes perfect sense that We know who this devil is We can identify him what? Through Bible prophecy and history Alright, it's on point The Lord, look The Lord is not going to forsake his people He knows who his people are Alright, this is some matter Just bringing out the information Simply put And that's it Keep it moving Alright, of course Brothers got that zeal Of going to the history Cause you go into one information, we jump around, and you know we we edify the Lord willing, we build up the elect or or the sheep that are listening. Okay, check this out. Up to this time, up to this time, no such attempts have been made. His classification set up a color line, right? It's classified races, right? Okay, and That's this is what is Esau's carnality, right? To the de the detriment to the detriment of later generations, such as now. Okay, detriment meaning uh. Basically, the lower living, you know what I'm saying? Like the... Uh, Destrumental. To fuck it up, basically. Exactly. It's detrimental. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Misunderstanding. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Mr. Blumenbach classified five chief races of mankind. The Caucasian, the Mongolian, the Ethiopian, the American, the American, American Indians, and M Malayan. Moreover, he considered the Caucasian to be the original race. That's a blasphemy against the scriptures. All right, that's a blasphemy because these devils are not the uh, the the strongest race. Matter of fact, gr grab Obadiah um um verse um you in Obadiah right? Yeah, I'm already going there. to the uh, part that it says the the lowest of the people. We're gonna go also to in Daniel four seventeen. This is Obadiah one in uh. Says, it's like the fir like first uh, second verse or third verse. I got you. Verse two, I'll start at the top again. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord power concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen, Araji, let us rise up against her, her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, thou art greatly despised. Right, small among the heathen, meaning Esau is the lowest race on earth. He has made thee small among the heathen, or to look at as the smallest race on earth. But you gotta understand through Bible prophecy and throughout history, the Lord brought them up to get, have that 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 great power. All right, to have that great power. Okay. This is Daniel four and seventeen. This matters by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the Holy One, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever He will. Instead of up over it, the basis of men. So who's the base of men? Base means to be in a low position. All right. How you think they got into the Ottoman Empire? How you think? Why would you think the uh, uh, king? Uh, no, I'm not even gonna go there yet. But why you think they they fought against like Genghis Khan and them? It all ties in. Uh, it is it it back and forth wars in order to obtain a specific gradualism or g gradually to obtain a specific land during that battle of decoration. It all ties in. They didn't have no place to go. They're nomads. Nomad means a, a fugitive or a vagabond or a runaway. A no dwelling place. It says in, in Genesis that he should be a fugitive and a vagabond. All right? And, a, and the basis of men is talking about Esau. But the, the Lord said he sets up kings and he brings down kings. They just got the power now. So that was it on that. Mm -hmm. Going back into uh, verse 3. It says the pride back at Obadiah. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwelleth in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, 
that's why I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Okay. Um. So the Most High is gonna bring these devils down. You know, He's not gonna set them up to where He's now okay. You know, with the Lord, He's not gonna set them up to where He's peace. He's peaceful. All right. Actually, a land. All right. Uh, a land. Um. A land is a people before it's a place. All right. So just because Esau is in the Holy Land, that doesn't make him holy. All right. Israel was a people before it's a place. All right. So um. Uh, where's that scripture at? There's no peace unto the wicked. Uh, Isaiah 48 and 22. This is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 22. And the brother's right. There ain't no peace unto the wicked. Okay? Um, this is Isaiah chapter 48 and 22. There is no peace, save the Lord, unto the wicked. Right. So, if you're in the Holy Land or if you're in the Caucasus Mountains, there's no peace unto you, man. You know, the Lord has to, the Lord uh, gives peace, man. The scriptures say, I, I, uh. I bruise and I heal. I bruise and I heal, yep. Mm hmm So who do you think set up Esau to come back in the pot? How do you think, why do you think the Baffle Declaration was written? All right, it's all orchestrated by the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai. And, and, and the angels, you know, they, 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 they bring that information right back to the Heavenly Father. So you can't do nothing against the truth before the truth. All right, we know that them devils don't belong in that land. It's not their land. This is uh, he, uh, Job chapter 12, verse 18. He looseth the bond of kings and girdeth their loins with their girdle. Mm. He leadeth princes away spoiled and overthroweth the mighty. Damn. He removeth away the speech of the trusty and <laughs> taketh away the understanding of the age. Wow. You know? So the, this is the most hard movie, man. All right? And as we're going to read, which um, I'll probably get that next, that Joel 3. You know, because the most high took us down. All right, he took away our well-spoken orators that the brother always goes into. Right. You know, and he gave that he gave that that uh to Esau. That right, that prestige to Esau. So where everybody looks at him, even if he says a lie, you know, yeah. like Esau, yeah. you remember all that uh speech that Bill Gates made? We plan on killing off all these people. People clapping and like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah, they they fall for that because yeah. like the, the Lord wasn't playing with us. He said when he took our uh, well spoken orators, like you got even brothers that struggle to even make videos explaining mm -hmm. themselves, but the point gets across, and and uh, and the Lord is Lord willing, He's well pleased with it, because we're not we're not trying to please ourselves. We're trying to please the Heavenly Father. All right, so he took away our well-spoken orators. We wouldn't be like like Esau and his um, Harvard University or uh, Oxford University or whatever it is, the Ivy League. Um, yes, uh, the, the the essence of individually the way they speak. All right, and the Lord chooses the base things, man. That's why your brothers got to be confident. Don't worry about what these devils they going into slavery. We gonna get all that back, you know. Verse twenty one on the right hand side, though. Verse twelve and twenty one. He pours contempt upon princes. And weakeneth the strength of the mighty. He discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. Alright, and this is how you know what time we're in because the Lord has his, his prophets out there discovering the deep things, man. This Obadiah verse 6. How are the things of Esau mm -hmm. searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Read that again. Yep. It says he discovered deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light. The shadow of death, you know, and it's not this the world. This is the shadow of death, man. Joel, what was that? Uh, Psalms twenty three. Psalms twenty three. You know. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Oh, he's about to grab. You yeah, some? yeah. I might as well just yeah. bring it out. This is uh, Psalms twenty three. This is and it's funny how these so called Christians like quoting these scriptures, but don't know what it means. All right, mm -hmm. they, they or the shadow of death. But you're in the shadow of death and, and agreeing with the shadow of death. Okay. Right, because. Hey, that, hey, what we're getting into, that about for the declaration, that's actually death. All right? And that's how do right. we know that? Because many people are dying, have died, and continue to die just for Esau to uh, establish his so-called throne on the Holy Land, man. But we, we're going to definitely get that. We're going to go into Joel. Mm -hmm. We're going to go into um, Isaiah 2. We'll definitely get that. Yep. I don't want to write this out. We'll definitely get that at the Father's Sheep. Here's Psalms 23. Psalms 23, starting at verse... Uh, um, let's start at verse three. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake, for his namesake. And his name ain't no Jesus Christ neither. 
All right, his name ain't no Jehovah. His name ain't no uh, Yeshua. Okay, what else? Uh, uh, his name ain't um, Jesus. Mm. Uh, uh, the title is not uh, Christos. Yeah. Okay, Jesus Christos, like the northern tribes, like saying the so-called Puerto Ricans. Okay, join unto idols. Leave Ephraim alone. Okay, thy rot or salake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Okay, I will fear no evil. What's the shadow of death? America, the place of the Israelites' captivity. This is the shadow of death. Okay. So going uh, back at Job 12 and 23, he increases the nations and destroyeth them. He enlargeth the nations and straighteneth them again. All right. So here it is. The Most High has increased Esau. He's made him. He's he's, he's made him prosperous up up until this point. You know, he's got his wars. He, he got everybody on his side, you know, okay. but he's increased them. All right. And he's he, most high is going to continue to increase Esau. Why? So he can uh, he can catch him in the land barren and desolate and, and mm -hmm. fuck him up. That's exactly right. Now, now you mentioned, right? Read that part again. He it says, increased uh, the land. Uh, he, he increased the nations and destroyeth them. Okay, the Lord increases the nations and destroys them, uh, destroy them, right? So the Lord is the one that prospers a specific people and gives them inheritance to prosper in the specific mm -hmm. lands that they're in. But this is what Esau did with that Baffler Declaration. Proverbs chapter 22 and 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Now our father's land, what's that? Our land, all right? Our land. Okay, and these devils removed this far from our borders. Damn, I keep quoting Joel. We might as well just probably just go there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's what these devils did. They gained, okay, they heaped up people. I'm going to grab that too and have a coop too. I got so many scriptures flowing now. Micah 2, I have a coop. Um, remove not the ancient landmark. So w by removing us uh, far away from our borders, they removed the ancient landmark. You can just grab it. Then I'll read this again and jump to another scripture. Con, con. I'm going to finish this off real quick. There's con. only like two more verses. Uh, Job 12 and 24, he taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. Hey, wait a moment. Didn't he do that with you devils in the cox's mouth for a thousand years? The Lord did it. Mm -hmm. The Moors. The Moors wasn't even really, it found, we already pretty much like wasn't um, right with the Lord at that particular time too. All right, we're following Islam during the uh, Muhammadan conquest and after that, or even, uh, you know what I mean? When these different religions came in, uh, Catholicism and from the Roman Catholic Church, we started following Christianity, paganism. All right, but the Lord still moved you devils in the Caucasus Mountains by allowing the Moors to run you out over there to, uh, which is specifically Georgia, Russia. Okay, and um, and uh, Russia. It says they grope in the dark. They grope in the dark without light, and He maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. Yep. Yeah, they're drunk with their philosophies. They came out. They went into um. They went into the Caucasus of man. Uh, Caucasus of man to the Caucasus of mountains with philosophies. With a mind full of philosophies, they came out of the Caucasus of mountains with a mind full of philosophies. You can't change. You saw these devils can't change who they are. A leper cannot change his spots. This is Joel. That's what you was calling. Jo Joel three. You can start from the top. This is Joel three and one. It says, "For behold." In those days and at that time, when I shall bring again the captivities of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, the, doesn't the Lord didn't the Lord say He was going to gather His elect from the four corners of the earth, or the angels will gather and He will raise us back up? That tabernacle with David being built up, like it says in Amos nine and eleven. So while the Lord is gathering us back up as a people to Judah, that represents the southern tribe and, and, and um, Jerusalem, the northern kingdom, okay? Now, or Judah represents the, the, uh, yeah, the southern tribes and, and, mm -hmm. and Jerusalem, the northern kingdom. He's also bringing these uh, imposters that are living in our land or dwelling in our land to a battle of war. That's called Yahweh Mashapat, the valley of decision, uh, right. the Lord's judgment, okay? Mashapat, Yom, judgments. Right, yep, because as, as we were going into, and as the... Uh you could go into that Balfour Declaration, going into uh, how they would not have prejudice against any... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was definitely going to get that still. I was definitely going to get that gun out. Um, this is um, in the Balfour Declaration. Let's uh, start right here. It being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which... Cle wait, clearly understood. He has broken the everlasting covenant. He has broken his agreement. Check this out. He... 
it being clearly understood. So when something is clearly understood, meaning, okay, we accept it as, okay, it's understood, meaning you know not to do it because just understood already, right. but clearly understood, given, a, okay, this is what's not going to happen. This is not what we're going to do once we get into that land. We're not going to... um. Right. um it's Dude, set in stone, right? Right, it's mm -hmm. set in stone, meaning it's engraved. All right, that's why Psalms 15 and 16 says that they can't follow the Lord's instruction. They can't mm -hmm. follow the Lord's uh, truth. Uh, okay. th uh, they can't do it because it's not in them to do it. They always got to break a covenant in agreement with somebody that they promise not to break. Mm -hmm. Native American Indians, okay, uh, over 500 treaties. I'm not just talking about peace treaties, but over 500 plus treaties that the so-called white man Esau, Edom, broke. All right, against the Native American Indians. All right, they know that. <laughs> and, and check this out: it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice. Okay, prejudice means to harm. That should that should may harm the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine. Here's an example: you got what you call the Falastin Jews, these Ethiopians that are being ran out of Israel. And being looked at as, an, um, you got to get out of this land. You don't belong here. But it says it's clearly understood that you shouldn't harm or pre a pre prejudice anybody that has a different belief. Right. All right. So, love, matter of fact, grab it right quick. I, uh, love work of no ill towards his neighbor. Oh, I got you. Even though that's um, referring to the Israelites as showing um, kindness and brotherly love. But it applies to Esau too because they use our book to swear in. All right, and their core systems and etc. All right, this is Romans chapter thirteen, verse ten. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. That's it, straight to the point. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. All right, meaning uh, uh, you gotta uh, if somebody is dwelling on by you securely, you're not supposed to harm them. All right, the scriptures tell you too, you're not supposed to harm them. All right, but but Esau, all right, uh, works ill. Towards the whole world, towards everybody. That's how we got into that land, and we know that, and they know very well. Okay. Yep. Um. Hey, you, even to this day, you got what? You got uh wars over there in the Gaza Strip, man. Esau is shooting uh down them uh them Arabs, you know, like like uh. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. <laughs> like that, like that target practice. That's shit. Also, it's a lot, guy. That's what also I meant to say that they're gunning down the so-called police brutality against the Ethiopians. Look it oh, up. Oh yeah. The that, that's in Israel. All right, it's a, a police brutality happening against them. That's Satan against Satan. Two imposters living in our land, which some of them can be Israelites because our people are scattered. We're not going to not say that. We, right. we will say that, okay? But the works have to clearly show if you were Israelite or not, mm -hmm. right? And the Lord, and throughout the test of time, shows you who his men are. Okay, we're, all, we're scattered throughout the four corners, all right? So, um, so it says here, there were not... Pre prejudice, matter of fact, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine. So, yep, that's a decree broken. All right, that's a, a, a decree broken, and what they do establish false decrees. Okay, or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. And that makes sense, though, because I was just, uh, you know how we've been reading, like, judges and stuff like that? And um, how, when you read the scriptures, it says that these nations are there until this very day. You know, so that makes sense how you have, like, you're going into, like, the Ethiopians, which are Hamites. All right. right? Palestine, which like, goes into Philistines, right. which are Hamites. They are there until this day, you know? That's where they got the name Philistines from Palestine. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, that's where they got Palestine from Philistine. It's the same people. They, as a matter of fact, you can continue on that, on that, Joel, since right. we're mentioning that. So this is Joel 3 and 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Right. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. To plead. To plead means to like, look. These are my people. You know, those that held him captive refused to let him go. The Lord is pleading, pleading with these other nations. And guess what? They still got his people under subjection. Still subject to payments. Okay, bond. Like uh, Elder Pastor was going into the word bond. We're still bond to these devils. Okay? So the Lord is pleading 
all right, for his people. Who are his people? You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. And the reason why we could always prove that is because these prophecies and these curses fit us perfectly. Okay? They can't prove that they're Israelites. They can't do it. They call themselves by Israeli. Matter of fact, I got a precept. Bring, bring it out. Alright, this is Isaiah chapter oh, 66, verse 16. It says, For by fire and by a sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. You know, so that's how the Lord gonna plead with you, man. He's not gonna come and have a conversation with you. He's having a conversation with you right now. Right. That's Isaiah 47 and 3. He said he should not meet thee as a man. Yeah. You think how is going to come back as, as handing out like brothers always like <laughs> to mention like cupcakes and uh, flowers and stuff like that. No. Mm, He's judgment. coming back uh, with angelical body which you devils cannot fight against. Your technology, your 5G networks, you can your vaccines, you can mix up uh, DNA of this and your vaccines and all this other crazy demonic stuff y'all doing and it's not going to affect the elect. It doesn't matter what you do. The Lord created technology. He, he created the elements. He knows everything you devils are trying. All right. So, you know, just to recap, we on Joel 3 and 2. That's right. And Esau, until this very day, all right, he's trying to get everybody uh, to, to believe that he should be in the land. Okay. So it says verse 3, and they have cast lots for my people, all right? So they took the real Israelites out there, out, out of the, uh, you know, land, you know, and planted their, uh, and, 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 planted their seed. and go into how they took us out, too. How they took us out, how we got to the Americas, okay? Oh, yeah. Also, too, in 70 AD. 70 AD, that was the way we, we left that land. They took us out of the, that, that same region. Mm -hmm. That same, the Romans, which are Edomites, look up the, uh, the historic facts. The historical facts do not lie, which are Edomites. Why do you think the Israelites, why do you think we fled to the west coast of Africa and we're in other parts and fled to other parts of the earth? All right? Yeah, we were being persecuted. Exactly. And that's that's just the custom of ours, man. When you go into um, the time of Yahweh Shah's birth, when Herod wanted to uh, put the decree out to kill him, yep. the angel told him to what? Flee to Africa. Okay? So our people flee, all right, into Africa. And really, we're really Africa, all right? Well, they would flee across, you know, they, they were scattered, but really Africa because, you know, we were all dark skinned, as the brother had read before from Babylon to Timbuktu. It, it was hard to make a distinction. Mm -hmm. It was hard to make a distinction between an Israelite and a Hamite. You got to remember, too, when you go into the book of Judges, you had Israelites, dark skinned people, dwelling amongst Hamites, another dark skinned race of people, all right? So it's a, uh, 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 it was a, dist uh, a way yeah. to, to blend in and to hide. All right. That, uh, it was Simon and Canaanite. Simon, uh, uh, Simon, uh, Simon. Uh, they call him Simon uh, Canaanite, but Simon the Lotus was in Cyrene, Libya, which is a northern part of Africa. Which was an, uh, uh, an, a, a disciple, and uh, okay, of course, became an apostle, a disciple, uh, an apostle of Yahweh Shai. Okay. So reading on verse three, and they have cast lots for my people, and have gathered and have given a boy for an harlot, and stole a girl for wine. 